This is one of my favorite rivalries in modern StarCraft 2, as these two pro gamers have now faced off against each other 37 times so far this year. And it seems that the majority of their encounters have happened over the last couple of months. Now this is the very first time that they are playing against one another on the new multiplayer balance patch with all of the new maps as well. And it just so happens to be the finals of this week's ESL Open Cup. So spawning right here in the bottom left hand corner of game number one on a map called Solaris, playing with the blue Protoss pieces, we have the number one Protoss outside of South Korea, and he goes by the name of Max Pax. His opponent in the opposite corner with the Red Terran SCVs, likewise, well, not also the best Protoss player outside of Korea, but the number one Terran. We're looking inside of the main base of Clem. I guess overall, Somebody like Maru might be a little bit better, but you know what? In my heart, Max Pax is the number one Protoss and Klim the number one Terran. Maybe a little bit of European bias coming in there, I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about the changes that are most significant for this particular matchup, right? Because I can imagine not every single one of you reads the balance patch before you go to bed at night. I definitely don't do that myself. Definitely not. Now, let's talk about the most significant changes in this particular matchup. I'm not going to discuss everything, but let's talk about the most important stuff. So first off, the Cyclone has gotten a complete rework. The intention is to make it viable against Protoss, but honestly, in general, Clem playing Terran mech feels a little bit weird. He very much so is an infantry-based man. He loves playing that bio-based army. Maybe he'll make a couple of them and we'll have to see. I mean, if he decides to play Mass Cyclone, it's got to be a really strong unit. But I think overall, yeah, I don't see how it's going to be that much more viable against Protoss than it used to be. But only really time will tell. A very significant change, however, of course, is the change to the Ghost. The Ghost now overall is a little bit weaker than it used to be. And obviously the EMP or radius reduction is significant because it will help out not just with your spellcasters as Protoss, but also against the Protoss shields. They should be sticking around for a little bit longer. Lastly, the most significant change overall in the earlier stages of the game, I would say, is the Raven nerf. So the Raven now needs to research the interference matrix. It still has all the skills that it normally has. But you need to commit to the Raven a little bit more. No longer, I don't think we should have done that. Anyways, uh, no longer do you have to, can, like no longer can you just make a Raven, be safe against half of the Protoss early game and then also interfere in the Matrix to Colossi later into the game on top of it. That seemed a little bit silly to me and well, that no longer is gonna be the case. Okay, so the biggest changes I think overall in this patch are the nerfs made to Terran. At least the biggest changes in favor of Protoss, but Protoss, of course, did also receive a bunch of updates. First and foremost, the Mothership and the Tempest. I don't think we're really going to see a lot of Mama ships just by themselves. Essentially a complete rework. It's now cheaper, but also a little bit weaker overall. And it no longer has that permanent cloaking, but it's an activated ability now. Anyways, long story short, I don't really see us getting Mothership rushes that often, especially not at this level of play. Maybe I'd be excited to see it, but I don't think it's really going to be that important. But more importantly, I think, is that it could be made in combination with the new Tempest. So the Tempest, for all intents and purposes, is more microable. And obviously, especially, here's the Cyclone, by the way. I wonder if the Adepts could have fought it. Yeah, all right, anyways. The Tempest is now more microable, and maybe when you have a bunch of Tempest going, you may as well also make the new Mama ship. And I think the Tempest is mostly something that Protoss players will still be getting only when the Terran player goes Mass Liberator in the later stages of the game. And that should definitely make things a little bit easier in that department. However, right before that, one thing that Protoss players are very fond of is, of course, the Disruptor, especially Max Pax. He plays Mass Disruptor all the time. And the Disruptor overall is a little bit weaker. The last thing... <laughs> There's a lot. The last thing that I do believe is going to require a little bit of additional information and that we will certainly see, uh, I'd be surprised if we have a best of five in this series where not a single immortal gets made, is of course the immortal change. So, to clarify, because there is a little bit of confusion about the immortal, are we going to commit? There we are. Nicely done. It's by the way going to be a widow mine drop right here from Clem. I hope I still have the, uh, the time right here to discuss the immortal changes. This will be scouted by Maxi Pax because he already has a pylon over here. Stalkers should be getting in position, but we have Max Pax going for the Twilight Council opener together with the Prism. So he's just about to start microing on the other side of the map. Yeah, Clem knows he's been spotted. He's going to hang out over here. He's going to commit as soon as Protoss is busy, microing over on this side of the map instead. Okay, so real quick, the immortal. 
The barrier has gotten an update. The barrier will now trigger on being hit, blocking up to 100 damage, including the initial hit. This means that the barrier, so the active, or not the activated ability, sorry, the passive ability on the immortal, it will now be able to block one full EMP. Before the patch, it would take damage, and then the barrier would get triggered. Honestly, in a way, it kind of sounds like a bug fix to me, because it's kind of silly the way that that worked anyways. But overall, the Immortal should now be a little bit more Immortal, but it'll probably still be quite mortal anyways. There you go. Okay, so those are the changes. Definitely nothing huge, but certainly more significant than any of the other changes that we have seen over the last couple of years. Widowmines are going to be able to get the Burrow in. Okay, a couple of the probes will get sacrificed. There's, of course, a couple minor changes as well to, for example, the Widowmine on Burrow speed if you do decide to go for Drilling Claws and all the rest of it, but... I don't really see, yeah, a whole lot of that coming into the mix. But overall, right? The Raven being a little bit weaker, the Ghost being a little bit weaker, it should make this early game a bit more manageable. And right away, Max Max here has decided to go from Blink Stalker into those Colossi. It'll still be obviously, yeah, this, this opener right here from Clem is still gonna be more than viable. He's just gonna go for a good old Stimpak Combat Shield plus one infantry based army, but I do believe that the options here for Terran in the earlier stages of the game are a little bit more limited, or at the very least, if they do decide to go for a Raven play, they will have to be a little bit more committed. My main concern, I guess, is whether or not the Ghost nerf is enough. I'm not entirely sure if it is, to be honest. And whether or not the Disruptor nerf is gonna be a little bit too much. Some people have said that maybe they should also have added on like a Colossus buff on top of it, but eh. Not 100% sure about that, but overall, I do think the changes are actually favorable. Overall, Protoss was not winning as much against Terran as they probably should have been, especially at this level of play. And I think with these changes, it's gonna make it ever so slightly easier. But emphasis on ever so slightly. This is definitely not gonna be a landslide advantage right now all of a sudden from x -Pax. But you know what? Imagine there would have been a Raven in the mix over here. Then suddenly this Colossus opener that Mr. Maxpex has gone for would have been completely pointless, right? And, you know, if the Raven would just get a good hit in, you disable two of the Colossi, that is basically game over. Not gonna be the case here in this particular game anymore. Okay. Stalkers, I guess they do not have their blink available. Yeah, they must have blinked over the wall. Although they do have it available now, he's gonna try and get away, but that <laughs> low-ranged Cyclone is still putting in the work. Okay. Overall, so far though, I have noticed that Max Max has lost a lot of troops for no apparent reason. Little bit of sloppiness. Couple more probes ended up going down as well to that very first Reaper in the earlier stage of the game. Nice couple force fields here. Clem boosting forward with the Medivac, trying to get a little bit of work in. Okay. I'm assuming it's still a no-brainer to transition towards Ghosts as soon as the third base is set up. I just don't see how you're going to play this matchup without Ghosts, because it's still going to be a phenomenal unit, but not quite as powerful as it once used to be. That's Colossi, putting in quite a bit of work, though. We probably don't want to clump up our units so much, so we take maximum amounts of splash damage right there from that, uh, from that siege tank, but overall, Max Specs does stabilize, and he decides to plot down that fourth base over here as well, a little bit closer to his natural. Okay. This is a full base ahead right now, of course, on the Terran. Quite significant. I mean, a full base as far as the structure itself goes, not as far as the work account goes. Curious to see when we're going to be seeing that Ghost Academy. So generally, you take it right about right now. Right about right now would be a good moment for that Ghost Academy. Are we going to make it? Or are we going to double down on the Marine Marauder production here instead? This is the moment where Max Max is going to have a lot more map control. Yeah, Terran can't really be, be... They can't really be maneuvering around the map nearly as easily. We've got a little bit of a Zealot run by over here, but looks like the majority of them will get caught. Okay. This is looking pretty strong right here, though, for Mr. Max Specs, but he just doesn't have that many units here to deal with the Marauders. Colossi are one of those units, and by the way, we do have apparently... Ah, a cheeky little Widowmine drop over here, trying to get some damage done, I see. Yeah, the Colossus is very strong against Marines, but pretty horrible against Marauders. I wouldn't mind seeing some Immortals here. Instead, Max Pax decides to double down on the Stalker production, and there indeed do come the Ghost up on the production tab as well. 
Okay. Fourth command center here. Dark Shrine is going to finish up inside of the main base. Fourth Nexus is going to finish as well. And actually, it's a little bit late compared to where we normally see it. At this point, Max Pax is only at 59, well, at this point, 60 workers versus 68 right now from Clip. So with 2 2, we're going to start it up here. I think it's time for Clem to maybe get a little bit more adventurous out into the map once again. He knows that now with Ghosts and Marauders here, he should have a bit of an easier time attacking. These Stalker armies are not really inspiring me very much. Okay, one Dark Templar in the mix. We're just gonna run by this army, fair enough. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Protozunas just sort of get destroyed in this game. Okay, Dark Templar now in the main base though. Dark Templar over at the third, Dark Templar over in the Natural Expansion too. Maybe these can help out and even out the score a little bit, because so far, this game has been an uphill battle right here for Max Pax. Oh, accidentally target firing right there with one too many of his Colossi as well. On his own Stalker, that is, trying to kill a Widow Mine. And yeah, he did kill the Widow Mine, but came at the cost of a Stalker, which is not quite ideal. Okay. Clem doing Clem things, though. Here's the Disruptor. Oh, look at it. Kind of cute. It's a little bit more supply heavy. The radius has been changed as well. It's still funny to me, though, how with the new balance patch, one of the intentions is to try and make the game less game ending with splash damage. So disruptors get nerfed, banelings get nerfed, which is all fair enough. And then there's a Widow Mine buff. Guys, guys, guys. That is so tone deaf, I still can't get over it. It's kind of funny in a way. I know that the Widow Mine buff is almost irrelevant, but like... <laughs> These units are pretty good, man. They're pretty powerful. We probably won't see Drilling Claws, let's be real, but it's still so funny to me. I've noticed that Terran players get very upset when you point that out. Yeah, it's... It's interesting. Hey, look! Immortal coming up. Hopefully it's gonna be indeed a little bit more tanky. In the past it would just simply take a lot of damage from EMPs. And now hopefully those shields are gonna aid it a little bit more. Fifth base coming up right now for the Protoss right here at the bottom of the map. And we're gonna start up the Commencator Explosion. So yeah, very first proper game of PvT that I'm casting on the new patch is looking like a neat little macro game. So you know what? Maybe we are gonna see Mass Liberator. There we go. I mean, for now, it's just going to be for the Vikings, I suppose, right? Those Vikings are going to be very nice when it comes to killing the Colossi. It's important that you get a micro those units, of course. One of my pet peeves whenever I look at viewer-submitted replays is... ...about two-thirds of the Vikings dying before they finally get in range of the Colossus. This is actually a real problem. When it comes to, well, not even lower level StarCraft 2, all the way up to like low masters or so. I think about half of the Vikings get destroyed before they even see a Colossus. You should pay attention here to the way that Clem produces and maneuvers around his units, okay? He's very good at uh, keeping those units out of range. There's the first EMP. Yeah, so, okay. Nice hit right there on the Colossus. The Ghost has to step a little bit further forward because of the EMP radius reduction. It also obviously effectively has less range. So therefore, it needs to expose itself more in order to actually land the EMP, which is a very significant change. Like, I think it's like 175 to 1.5, which really doesn't sound very big in numbers, but obviously it's a radius reduction, which really changes the surface area significantly. This video just became a math equation. Find X, guys. <laughs> nice engagement over here, though. But fighting on top of the battery overcharge is nearly impossible. You know what? Don't find X. Find the like button. <laughs> find the like button below the video. Click it. Gently caress it. Maybe if you're watching this on a phone or like an iPad or something, touch it with your nose. Just change it up, you know? Make it fun. Hello, Colossus. No, 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 no. Hello. Was... Okay. Not ideal. One of them ended up going down. A lot of chaos now inside of the main base, but reinforcing Terran units are slowly starting to clean up those Zealots and Dark Templar. Dark Templar, though, are basically just Zealots that deal more damage, right? They're also very gas-heavy, but you can see that Max Specs now suddenly is looking a hell of a lot more powerful. That fight on the battery overcharge, not quite optimal there for Clem whatsoever. And now suddenly, I mean, he doesn't have that much money anymore because he's been making all of those command centers. Planetary Fortress, though, stays alive for now. There's the Liberator ranged. 
Liberators together with the Advanced Ballistics upgrade are awesome. We're just going to continue onwards here with the War Prison. Lovely stuff. Yeah, the majority of the Vikings are still around. They did kill a Colossus or two. Let's maybe have them kill... There you go. The Prism as well. Not a bad idea. Okay, finally, all of that will be cleaned up. But that allowed Max Specs some very good staying power in this game once again. That being said... I don't know if he can really push for the win right now. I doubt it. And Clem did just add on about a gajillion command centers, right? And with a gajillion, a gajillion, I mean four, which is basically the same number. Just a couple zeros less or more, who cares? It is definitely going to allow him a lot more economy. And if Max Specs can't really punish him for it, this is still a significant advantage here for Clem. Yes, Max Specs has got a superior economy here. And yes, he's got more workers and all that, but Clem is just not gonna need that many workers anymore here over. Oh, are we gonna commit to killing the Disruptor? We will. Nice target firing right there by Clem. Getting rid of those Disruptors before they can really get a lot of damage in. That being said, though, just the sheer amount of stuff right here that Mexpec still has left over is noticeably better. There's a lot of uh, Metavex here as well, out of energy. You know what? I think if you're gonna go for that Liberator ranged upgrade, you should queue up. The new upgrade as well for those Metavex to regenerate that energy twice as fast. It's in the Fusion Core, so if you get the ranged upgrade for the Colossus... Or, sorry, well, for the Liberator, right? They're basically the Terran equivalent of a Colossus. If you if you get them upgraded, you may as well also upgrade the Metavex, I believe. So at this point, you don't really want to add on too many more. So you may as well make the ones that you do have a little bit more powerful. Yeah. Maybe that's actually going to be a significant change. I think in my original Patch Notes video, I said that it wasn't that good, but... Thinking about it more, it'll be quite nice. So for now, Maxpex is trying to deal with the mass liberators by just playing his Blink Stalkers better, which certainly is an option. The issue, however, is that once the liberator count really grows, ground units just don't cut it anymore, and I still don't see any Stargate production on the other side of the map. Disruptor getting a nice little hit in. Okay, big EMPs. Yeah, against armies that are super clumped up like that, the EMPs are still covering the entire force. It doesn't really matter that much, right? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of immortal production. Hmm. I think what Max Spex is aiming for is to just try and overwhelm the Terran, maybe catch them out of position. But that sounds like a strategy that works well if the Terran player is not paying attention, like so. And I don't... Yeah, I don't really see that strategy being that great moving forward into the future, you know what I mean? Like, Clem should learn these maps over the next few months very, very nicely. And when he does, it's going to be very difficult, I think, to get a proper hit in like that. I really would not mind seeing... There we go, a Stargate or two. Okay. We are going to be going into the Stargate here eventually. Max Specs, though, right now with an overwhelming amount of units, Clem still put down so much of his money into infrastructure that he's no longer able to properly max out. Yes, the Stalker army is not going to be great at fighting this Terran force straight up, but it's done an, uh, an amazing job here at soft containing the Terran on the amount of bases that they've had now for a while. There's about three command centers for every mining base here, which is really not optimal whatsoever. And that's going to be one planetary fortress down the drain as well. And one of the few mining bases right now of the Terran player is gone. Mexpex slowly transitioning, but not really rushing it out whatsoever. Now the Liberators are here. Catches one of them. This is so dangerous though. With Marauders coming in from the site, Liberator also not getting the good hit in. In the meantime, we have once more Dark Templar and Zealots. Absolutely! Dismantling the Terran economy and production here. Lovely stuff. Maxpex, however, does get pushed in the corner. Does he have enough right here to just fight this Terran army? He's very split up with all of his units. Those Stalkers are very exposed without their blink upgrade. Okay, it's gonna be available once again, and I think he should be able to get out eventually. Clem immediately loads up whatever leftover unit he's got into a medevac, and he's now boosting for one last-ditch effort into the main base of the Protoss. And while it looked a little bit dicey there for just a moment, there is no way that's going to happen. Game number one goes in favor of the Dane. Clem's unconditional love for the Liberator and the Command Center turned out to be a little bit too great. 
I think what he did in the previous game would have worked great on, for example, Aggressven. But Solaris is just not a map that he's played that many games on yet, right? So he probably just got a little bit ahead of himself and Maxpex noticed it. Maxpex saw what his opponent was doing, he recognized the weakness and he immediately punished his opponent for it. Which is really, really nice to see. So not getting too carried away by the new patch. He was thinking about making Stargate units, right? Like I suggested him to do. But in the end, it turned out not listening to me was indeed the right call. And yeah, Max Specs sticking around there on that unit comp of his for a little while longer, reading the situation very, very nicely. He's decided to go for a Zealot first. This man literally has arms that are swords, or swords that are arms. He's also got hands though, so I'm assuming those swords, those lightsaber looking things, are retractable. This guy, however, is a complete badass and does decide to walk around with his blades out at all times. Adept getting chrono boosted on the back of this too. Max Pax is gonna start this particular game off with a little bit of early game aggression. Okay, not much you can do with the Reaper this time around, I don't think. So command center on the low ground together with a bunker. Zealot, however, is already gonna show up. He's prepared for battle at all times. Although he did, you know, make a loop around that, uh, that bunker. In a bit of an inconvenient way, he does actually cancel the bunker's production for just a moment. Eventually it does finish up, but now the command center is getting delayed a bunch. Adept is gonna show up as well. This command center can be delayed for quite a while. Eventually there will be a cyclone out, which ultimately will push all of this back. Reaper now also back home again. Two SCVs already, not bad at all. Jimmy over there gets sniped, his arm is all that really remains. If the Adept falls, the Zealot is also gonna be dead. Ooh, okay. Yeah. In the end, all of this will get cleaned up. Well, that was still like a good 30 seconds or so of delaying right there on, oh, on the command center. Nice! Maxfax very good when it comes to that micro. Honestly, his early game micro is unparalleled at high level StarCraft 2 these days. It is kind of nuts. Yeah. He's gonna go for three gateways. No, four gateways, okay. So, blink, four gateway opener right here by site, or on site Delta, rather, by Max Pax. Apparently, he wants to go for a very aggressive start. So, we will be seeing the Warp Prism here momentarily, and he's once again gonna try and pull off some of that perfect micro on the other side of the map. <laughs> In my mind, right? So, if we wanna make Cyclone openers viable against Protoss, which, honestly, I'm not even really sure if you should, but this opener, and honestly, even just a triple gateway opener for, well, for Protoss with, with Blink Stalkers and a Prism, doesn't it just shut down Cyclone play really, really hard? If one of the most common build orders from Protoss is that good against what is supposed to be a new build against, uh, fr from Terran against Protoss, why would anybody ever play Cyclones? I just don't see it. I, I, I feel like this particular opener right here, just a Blink Stalker start, which is what we see in at least half of the games of Protoss vs. Terran. I, I think it just by default shuts down any sort of Cyclone play. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I'm not. Widow Mine Opener once again, by the way, here for Klim. Maxipex doesn't have a lot of units at home this time around. and Yeah, he's ready to start pulling on or putting on the pressure. He doesn't really want to commit too many units here at home either. Ugh, unlucky there. Losing three probes, which is a bit unfortunate. Widow Mine in the main base. Clem being as obnoxious as he can be. Aggressive blink forward over here on the other side of the map. SCVs though, already waiting. Nicely done right there by Clem. Recognizing the situation. He probably knows that normally Max Pax has like three stalkers at home and when he only has one, you don't really even have to count the gateways. It'll probably be something that he is uh, very committed to. One Widow Mine still remains, the other one must have gotten killed. In the meantime, we do have that shenanigans continuing over here. Widow Mine, not unloaded yet. It is gonna unload right now. Micro continues, lovely work right here though. Good blink, perfect blink. But the Widow Mine gets snatched and it is gonna be around for a little while longer. So far though, Clem has held the natural expansion. And now he's gonna go into that siege tank production as well, right? Yeah. 
There's the second tank already available. He's gonna put one, well, Stalker a little bit ahead of the rest, so maybe we can kill one of the bunkers, and he will kill one of the bunkers. Decides to blink forward aggressively as well, snipes a siege tank. Widow Mine Drop continues over here on the other side of the map as well. Not gonna kill that much. Three workers in total, but I mean, it's more than the worker kills that Maxpex has gotten so far. He's got six in total, but... Well, three is not bigger than six. I don't think so. I don't know. Oh, we're gonna have to... I need a math... I need a math professional. A mathematician. A math wizard to determine whether or not three is bigger than six. I think so. Yeah. It depends, right? It depends three of what. Anyhow. This is obviously what Maxpex likes to do as well, right? When his aggression sort of gets shut down... And he doesn't really get a lot of damage done anymore at the front. Oh, yeah, that's not gonna be as easy to do anymore with Cyclones. He always does this in the main base. And sometimes this, like, hit squad of four Stalkers and a Prism deals more damage than the entirety of the army did earlier. Gets a lot of value still out of those units. Anyways, this is a good situation, Nero, uh, for Clem, though. Like, unless these upgrades get cancelled. Okay. If he gets the... Ooh. Stimpak gets the knife. Massive. Absolutely massive. I still like this game better for Clem, but that is gonna slow him down so much. Luckily for him, he wasn't just leaning into a two base all-in, as he did make a third command center on the back of this. But he's gonna have to restart all of those upgrades, and that's gonna take several minutes. Widowmind shenanigans, by the way, continuing on the other side of the map. Raven here trying to get some work done too. Just wandering around. Taking his Raven for a little stroll. Stalker's still getting more value though. I feel like this is such a, a key to the way that Max Pax plays. Like, most of the time, whenever we see the Protoss players giving up on their 4-gate aggression, they just sort of go back home. But Max Pax pretty much always hangs around and gets a lot more value over the course of the next minute or two. And I think that totaled up to, like, probably, like, 8 or so SCVs and a bunch of other important units as well for Terran. I mean, I'll, I think a lot of players would have left before they ever got even close to those tech labs over here, and Max Pex is gonna continue onwards once again. If he could deny one of those upgrades once more, that would be maybe even game-ending damage, honestly. Look at him. Yeah, nobody's really matching Max Pex's stalker control. It's really lovely. All of it is to say, though, that now he's forced to transition towards a macro game. He wasn't originally intending to play a macro game, but he needs to now. Still, he's got a decent economy. Oh, he had a decent economy. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll back off. Oh. I didn't even notice it on the minimap. I can't blame Max Pax for not noticing. Supposedly, they made the medevac a little bit bigger on the minimap, but if you skirt it all the way until the right side right there, you saw how the square only was about half a square. Okay, well, his economy used to be decent. Really nothing to write home about. But right now, we have a disaster to report here. This is not what Max Pax was hoping for, and now over the next minute or two, Clem is gonna heavily outgrow his opponent, even more than he already has been doing. Finally, Stimpak is gonna finish up. Combat Shield is already done. Concussive Shells are gonna also wrap up here soon. Plus one, plus one is done. I mean, it's it's as Protoss is starting up their very first ground upgrade. Clem is finishing up 1-1. One, one. That's absolutely massive. And his army is just bigger. Maybe these Stalkers can work some magic, though. Okay. Max Pax is not gonna go down without a fight. Apparently his best bet here is to go for a full-on counter-attack, and I really can't blame him for it. Saves the prism here as well, that's good. SCVs! Oi, oi, oi! Being betrayed right there by their Widowmine friends. There's not even a single shield battery at home, so... I guess it wouldn't really have mattered against an army this big. Max Pax has decided that his best bet is to go for a full-on counter-attack and a complete all-in, and I really don't blame him for it. It's just that he needs to address this Terran army sooner or later, and he just does not have the units for it. You would need the luckiest Disruptor hit here in order to shut all of this down. Yes, he did kill, by the way, his opponent's third. But right now, only 17 workers remain, and there's still no good answer against all of these biological units. Men with guns! Kind of overpowered! No. But they're definitely very strong. 
Max specs now and a measly 56 supply. 130 plus supply right now for Clem. He's been producing for a while. The majority of his army has been sitting at home. Would you say that the Marine is the strongest unit in all of StarCraft 2? Probably, right? Maybe the Queen. I would probably say that the Queen is even better. Yeah. I think the Baneling in the previous patch was also one of the greatest units, but... Yeah. Kinda hard to say. Overall, though, the Zealot definitely not quite as strong as either the Zerkling or the Marine. Okay, getting two Metavex here is really nice. But again, there's no answer. There is just no answer here. Now, the win condition in a game of StarCraft 2, okay, is to destroy all of your opponent's structures. Clem is not gonna be forced to do that, but he does even up the score. Oceanborn is gonna be game number three. Clem has decided to sneak an SCV across the map and build a half-finished engineering bay right over here on the low ground. This is gonna be right around the time that Maxpex has been cutting workers for a bit, and he wants to go for a Nexus, and he'll find... Oh, God. It's one of those games. The SCV is also hanging out over at the third base location right now, and... Apparently that forces mech specs all the way down towards the low ground. I mean, they may as well be neighbors now. <laughs> it really does feel like they're not that far apart. Is there something that Clem can do about it? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I got very excited that I apparently decided to inhale my saliva, which... <coughs> I do not recommend doing. I was thinking, if you can force your opponent into such an exposed third base... Are Cyclones good? Because this kind of looks to me like a Cyclone setup. A Cyclone setup? We're gonna need a little bit more gas, though. Can you actually support Mass Cyclone off of just a single gas geyser? If you're producing two at a time? Yeah! Do it! Don't just make Hellions now, though, Clem. I'm gonna be sad if it's gonna be Hellions. It's Cyclones! Very good. Turns out I didn't inhale my saliva for nothing. Um, command center on the back of this too, so it's not gonna be a complete all-in right here for Klimp. This base is super exposed. It's a Stargate opener this time around here for mech specs. I was wondering about this. Does this work in favor of Terran? I honestly don't know. But this is where pumping out two Cyclones at once is a very powerful tool. In the shed of all the Terran tools that they have. Okay, so it's two Cyclones into two Hellions. He doesn't have the gas to go for two more. If he can kill one of these... <sighs> that was fast. If he can kill one of those units for free, that would be massive. I think you just drive him straight. Yeah, you just drive him straight across the map. How good is an Oracle in this situation? Again, it's for all intents and purposes a new unit. Really hard to say. In the past, you wouldn't really want to fight this with an Oracle. Maybe now you can. Shield battery is done. But yeah, it turns out the Cyclone movement speed is about as big as... ...that of the Adept. Oracle at this point is available. Okay, let's see. How well does the Oracle do? Pretty well. Eh, not really actually. Never mind, I'll take it back. Oh! Ooh! Okay. Well, that's game, no? Um, yeah, you can pull probes. I mean, probes can try and kill a Cyclone. <laughs> this is the sort of stuff that I wake up for at 3 in the morning. I'm like, what if you go for an engineering bay block and force your opponent to take the exposed third base location? Are suddenly Cyclones good? I guess so, yeah. Keep in mind, though, that Clem obviously could have also gone for an extra gas geyser. Or maybe taken his first gas a little bit quicker there, and he would have been able to pump out up to, like, four Cyclones there. The two Hellions obviously were kind of nice, but four Cyclones really would have sealed the deal. Hmm. Unexplored territory. The question, I guess, for Protoss players now is, and this is something Maxpex has basically always done, whenever he gets his natural expansion blocked, he will take the third base as his very first expansion and then transition towards the Stargate. Is the Stargate transition the best choice there? Should you, by default, just put down another gateway there and just start pumping out more units? Kind of hard to say. So he did decide to go for the shield battery. Obviously, the adepts also really weren't that helpful there, right? Maybe you want to go for stalkers instead? A lot of questions. Yeah, it's hard to say. It is fun, though, how... I mean, it may be frustrating to play against, but it is fun, at least as a Terran player and 
as a viewer and caster of StarCraft games, I think it's fun to see how the players will figure out a way to deal with the Cyclone. Are we once again gonna go for Cyclones, Clem? Clem's like, yo, wait a minute. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Let me do a little bit more of that. So there is a command center on the low ground right here on Heartlet. Same for, of course, that Nexus on the other side of the map. I would imagine that Max Pex cannot resist the temptation of going into a Twilight Council, because the man loves Twilight Councils. That's what Max Pex's dreams are made of right over here, but Twilight Councils are pretty epic. Are we going to do the big switcheroo again? Let's do the switcheroo. Ah, oh, we're not going to do the switcheroo. Alright. Boring. I'm kidding. This is what he did in game number one and two, and certainly did seem pretty powerful. Honestly, though, game number one, right? Don't get me wrong, Max Pex did an amazing job, but that was definitely Clem's game to lose as well. So basically what I'm saying is it is a 3-0 lead in a best of five series, where the first player to win three games wins. No, not quite. Max Pex, yeah, managed to find a vulnerability in his opponent's armor in game number one, and then he decided to, well, be very aggressive and win the game eventually. Other than that, this has been a... Nice series for Terran. Obviously, though, not quite the perfect control that we have seen from Max Pex in the past. And he's obviously still testing out some of the strategies. I mean, he did a good job microing his stalkers earlier, but he was pushing up that ramp, and like it just didn't feel like the best map for it, maybe. Although he's got to have some sort of idea in mind, I guess, as to why he decided to go for it. But once again, going to be Widowmind player right here from Clem. Apparently, this is his go-to option right now. So if you're a Terran player and you're wondering what you should do in this matchup, I recommend you open up like Clem has been doing now. Three out of four games. Second Widowmind, hello. Oh. Just going to be a single Widowmind this time around. Well, never mind, guys. The minimap looks like creep spread. What's going on here, man? There's no creep in this matchup. <laughs> Why is it purple? It really does look like creep. Oh, yeah, yeah, it really is. Oh, there is creep. What? Sorry, I was leaning into my monitor. There's creep in this Terran versus Protoss. That's weird. Don't know why there's purple over on this side of the map, though. It's like lava or... Hmm. All right. A Terran and a Protoss are fighting over a Zerg planet, huh? Although, eh, judging by the remnants here and the Ursa deck, I think the Terrans have been close by. Starport, producing a Raven here. Just a single Widowmind, by the way. Nothing all too crazy. The Widowmind drops have been dealing too much damage, actually. Yeah. It's one of those builds the Terrans have been going for for literally a decade. I think the Widowmind was first introduced in 2013, and it's gone through a bunch of changes since then, but overall, I still think Terrans are getting away with way too much damage. There's no easy answer, right? There's no easy answer. And usually the Widowmind's... It's not so much that Protoss players aren't capable of defending it, but all of these Protoss units require a ton of babysitting. So... Terrans obviously are very clever and they will know, okay, my opponent is currently busy microing stalkers and, and, you know, trying to put them in prisms and blinking them back and making sure that they don't lose stuff. And they're thinking about, okay, when do I warp in again? If that's the opportunity that you can take to, like, boost in a medevac, life's pretty good. So already, honestly, this is not bad here for Clem, even though he just lost the bunker. Because he's been occupying, look at this, five stalkers on the other side of the map that really would love to be here. They would love to be here. You can't really go for like a, I don't know, uh, a photon cannon or something. Like there's no other good option. You would have to open up with like phoenixes, but then obviously you can't go for blink stalkers at this point in the game either. No cancel there from Clem. That was lovely actually for Max Pex. Clem, speed error? That never happens, but certainly not ideal. Okay. The new Nexus is now done. Observer here, trying to scout at what's happening. Prism scouting the top, Stalker scouting the center path. The Widowmine over here is still being a nuisance, but it probably, emphasis on the word probably, should not be getting a whole lot of damage done anymore. In the meantime, Max Pex is making that transition towards the Colossus, and 
Darren is once again gonna fire up their upgrades here soon. We should see Stimpak. Oh, we already have it finished, I was gonna say. Yeah, that would be very late right now if he still wanted to start it up, but we should see that coming into play here. The plus one infantry weapons is gonna finish up for Clem. And he's making himself up for an attack. Got a little confused right there because normally these upgrades are quite more in sync than this, but I guess he was a little bit late on the NG bay. Doesn't matter all too much. Stalker's going around. Charge is going to be done, though. And the Colossus, obviously, here is also already available. It does not have an extended thermal lens yet. But is there enough right now for Clem to just bulldoze his way through this army? He should not be able to. But, obviously, this is still a scary set of units. Ooh, the Raven's still dropping down a bunch of auto turrets. Widowmind still occupying so much. Nice snatch right there as well by that Medivac, reaping or keeping a couple of those units alive. Another Colossus will soon want to join his brethren, but that's going to be difficult to pull off. Widowmind drop now comes in. Four probes end up going down. Stalkers, yeah, a little bit late to the party. They're going to be able to kill all of this eventually. Max Max currently very busy trying to deal with all of those units. A couple of Stalkers do blink forward. He gets one of the siege tanks, but at the cost of, well, like three Stalkers there and a Zealot. And this setup right here from Clem is difficult to break. This early game from Protoss feels just as delicate as it's always been. Oh. Yeah, and this is... Like, reinforcements will probably clean all of this up. So, as more and more Protoss units become available, Protoss is going to be able to push this back, I believe, eventually. That's also, of course, because there's now a third command center available for Clem, so he doesn't really need to be out here as much anymore. But it's so tricky. Oh, Marauders! Trying to go for one final hit, and they will get it. He's even going to go after some of the Zealots right now. Great control right here by Clem. Doing a fantastic job, keeping as many of those units alive and getting so much value out of his force. He is not gonna let his foot off the gas, man. Lovely stuff. Yeah, in isolation, Protoss is capable of microing this. And in isolation, Protoss is also capable of microing the Widow Mines at the same time. But when you have to do both, it becomes very, very delicate and very tricky. Because it kind of feels like your units are made out of paper here. Now, maybe an Immortal-based opener is actually more reliable here than a Colossus. I'm not sure. I mean, it's not like... Yeah, probably not. Nah, it's not like there's really much of a change as far as the interactions go at this point. The barrier ability has specifically been changed with the Ghost in mind. And obviously, these attacks are executed without the Ghost anyways. Yeah, it's tricky. So now Clem finds himself in an advantage. And I do think that eventually, I mean, Max Max is probably going to be able to push this back. But now it's going to be an uphill battle. Maybe these Zealots can start some magic. Because they're going to need it. Reinforcing Terra units, not all were sent across the map. Lovely bit of control here once again by Clem, doing such a phenomenal job. But now with these Zealots over here, you can see that immediately Clem has forced, uh, or Max Max rather, has forced Clem to go all the way back home. Now, one thing I don't really like right here for Terran is the fact that his 2-2 is rather late. So, yeah. Clem definitely wants to be firing up those additional upgrades here. Because that's giving Max Specs a chance to claw him, yeah, himself back into the match. One thing, by the way, to, that, that is worth noting, I just realized that apparently these replays were played at about 4 in the morning. So, I guess these two players may have been up for a very long time as this series was being played although in general programmers they don't really live a regular day night cycle i know clem for example likes to wake up in the late afternoon <laughs> i don't really know exactly about max max but if you know you're going to be playing these tournaments obviously you can adjust your sleep schedule accordingly as well but I figured it's a fun little bit of information yeah waking up this late in the day and I'm playing all throughout the night. Maybe it's fine. Personally, I would not be able to play at 4 in the morning, is what I'm saying. But some players do prefer it. Okay. 
Dark Templar once again available, and we saw them working their magic earlier on. I hope for Clem's sake that he's not gonna get carried away again, making way too many command centers and getting a little over eager on the Liberator production. I think he should stick around on just his basic unit comp for a little while longer instead. Okay. Widowmine over here, trying to get some damage in. Maybe sniping some zealots that were chilling over at the watchtower and... Well, Max Specs will pretty much always control those watchtowers. The majority of the Terran army right now though has gone through the center of the map. EMP right there, softening up some of these units. Battery overcharge is gonna be important here as well. Purification Nova once again has to be microed against, but... There's not that many Colossi here available to really push this army back properly. The Disruptors completely miscontrolled, just sort of run to their deaths. That's because our Max Specs here is very busy on the other side of the map, trying to put on as much counter pressure as possible. With all of the heavy hitters gone out of the equation, it's Terran who ends up winning this game. Clem wins the finals of this week's ESL Open Cup 3-1 over Max Specs.